After a long winter, the thought of getting back out on the ocean to fish was a welcome escape from the office. Spring always comes slow along the water, but on this morning, the winds were light and the day was full of promise as I met up with Rich Antonino of the Black Rose Charters in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Known for Plymouth Rock, where pilgrims once landed to set up early American colonies, it was from this same shore that those pilgrims would set out to fish for cod and haddock throughout the plentiful Cape Cod Bay. You know, you gotta bring out the brand new lure for the day. Oldie but a goodie. Stinglefish PBJ. Three and a half ounce jig is all we're using here today, guys, for, for haddock. 90 feet of water. Yeah, really small jig. This isn't your typical 17 ounce Norwegian jig that you use for, for, for fishing on Stellwagen Bank. Tiny little jig. It makes a difference when you can get down to the bottom real quick. With, we're only 91 feet of water right here. Jason, go catch some fish, man. Uh, I would fish on the port side. Or, or fish right out the back of the boat if you want. That's the best. This is my, this is my rig when I have guys who know how to fish. Really, really light. It's um, a cool Marquina spinner um, bait caster with a shadow stalker. I'm giving you the ugliest teaser in the world because for some reason, big haddock like orange, so big ugly orange teaser. You on him yet? There it is, Jason, tight already. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be that laughing idiot all day. So Jason just dropped in, haddock. Hey, what do we got here? You can just got him right over to me. Most of the time I'm gonna be hooked right in the corner of the mouth really nice. You can just pull him in like that. That is an awesome little That's haddock. a beautiful fish right there, huh? Yep. What? Jason's on another one. <laughs> I know. I'm gonna show you the greatest trick in the world for releasing fish. This is the best trick ever. Slide the gaff down, get it in, in the corner of the hook, lift the fish upside down. You don't even get your feet wet. You don't get any, nothing gets wet, nothing touches the fish. You don't get slimy. What's nice about this is fishing in 80, 90 feet of water, depending on how quick he brings this fish up, it's easy to release these fish that are short and they're going to swim down. They're not going to have an issue with decompressing, you know, on the way down. So these fish can be released healthy when you're in 200 plus feet of water and you raise that fish to the surface. There's not a really a good way to let that fish go without it dying. So what's neat about this, you get a short, you want to release it, no problem. Oh, there we go. Nothing to take <laughs> nope. on, huh? Uh, you got one on. That's a little one. Little thumper. It's incredible over the years how much the gear has improved so much that you can fish with such light tackle and actually reel in some pretty good sized fish. This is not one, just drop them right there. Let's go ahead and clean that. I mean, as we're drifting, our line's gonna go that way. So we're gonna best swing it out about 15, 20 feet. The second it hits the water, you stop it for a split second with your thumb and you let it sink to the bottom. And then that'll swing it right back into us. And like you said, we're in how much water? We are in 91 feet of water. It's pretty insane. And action. Lock and load. To me, it's just a blast. There he goes. There you go. <laughs> oh, nice fish. You can tell when you're on the bottom. And what's the average size fish you figure rich out here? Is for a haddock. Four pounds. Yeah, I was gonna say in that four to five pounds. Yeah. I'd like to think it was five, but it isn't. It's probably, yeah, it's probably just underneath, or is he? Yeah, it's not a bad fish. It's not bad. I'm swinging one off the back. Oh yeah, there it is. That's a sweet spot. You hear that thing hit? Like a refrigerator <laughs> going in. That's a nice, look at this slob guy. This That's is the best one we've big seen all fish, year. Jason, huh? What are you calling the big ones over here? Oh, I don't mind gaffing that. Look at that, beautiful fish. It's a nice haddock, huh? Look at that. What do you figure he goes? Six and a half. Six and a half, seven pounds? Yep. Nice. Uh, a little guy. Uh, maybe not. Maybe 
Nah, he's not, he can go back. We'll get bigger. We'll get bigger. Look at him. He, this guy just said him. He just dropped right there. It wasn't a big fish. He was just just about that 16 inches. But we have to be over 17 out here. Why don't you get that out so that when we get a really nice big fish up like right now? <laughs> but yeah, the, the gear has definitely changed over the course of my lifetime. Something awesome. My drag, my drag is slipping, so all I'm doing is pinning it like this in the way, and then it lifts. Well, I tell people that's the best way to do it because you don't have to. You're not going to jam the, the reel that right. way. Right. I don't want to. I don't want to have to move the star, so I can just kind of like use my yep. thumb. I do that when I'm shark fishing and tuna fishing all the time. It's like palm in the spool, but you actually just pin, pin in the line. Pin in the line. Oh, I think I got foul hook. That's why it's probably nice fish. Nice though. fish. Look at that. Not huge, but he's 18 and a quarter. Man, there we go. These are going to be great on the dinner table. When you guys come back from break, we hope to be on. Different gear. I'm going to try it. Like yeah, you said, I'm going to keep moving around on the gear and see if we can't maybe get into a bigger fish. Looks like Jason's high hook of the day so far in I both know. numbers and size. He's using a bigger jig. Of course, got... he's got the rubber gloves and that makes a huge difference when you're out I'm here. just hungry, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a fish, yeah. Oh, that's a nice fish. That's a two-hander. Two two-hander right. to get him in. Oh, 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 that is a beautiful there fish. There we go. That's a nice one. Get these up in Maine like this. Yeah. Back at the boat launch, Plymouth's historic downtown was bustling. And if you've never visited the area, there's plenty to see and do. Buildings lined with layers of history, patriotic flares, restaurants, artisanal shops, gardens, live music, and group tours are all just steps from the waterfront. Over the years, this once sleepy South Shore community that was part of our bedrock and the founding of our nation has transformed itself into a beautiful waterfront community that has become a hot spot for tourism and recreation. As the weather warms up, the vibrant streets of Plymouth truly bloom with the Mayflowers. We got a nice fish on right here. Yeah, this is, seems like a nice That's fish. A nice one. We'll get, we'll get Gorgeous, him. huh? We'll get after this guy. Uh, Swing him right into you. He's hooked nice. That's a beautiful um, fish. Look at that. Put this thing in there. Gorgeous fish. Down with the hook, up with the gaff, and the fish just falls off. You don't get your hands dirty at all. My hands haven't gotten dirty at all. I know. Isn't it great being the boss? <laughs> What are the opportunities that exist on Stell Wagon? For the angler that's coming out here, recreational angle, commercial guy that's coming out here, what are the opportunities that exist as you go from April all the way through to the end of the year? I mean, it's funny, I feel like Bubba Gump. I could talk about all the different species we catch on Stell Wagon back It is the best. It really is. The cod are here year round, right now protected, so we can't. Yep. But the haddock starts in April, which we're doing right now into early May, and that'll stay through to when? We're going to have the haddock in shallow water till probably early June, maybe mid June. And I mean, I say shallow it'll be under 150 feet of water, which is awesome. Um, then we'll start getting like a little bit deeper on Stell Wagon Bank. I mean, I call, it, I call the whole area Stell Wagon Bank, even though some of it technically is gonna be east of Stell Wagon Bank, south of Stell Wagon Bank, but the whole area is just loaded with fish. A lot of sand eels out here. You'll see the whales feeding on sand eels. The tuna will move in here end of May. We do a lot of run and gun style fishing for tuna. We're looking for them in a blitz. So when you talk about a run and gun, you're, you're casting at these fish, you're, you're kind of, yeah. You're targeting fish smaller on the surface. In theory, I say th smaller, but we are. Maybe once in a while you get a slob that's going to come I believe that there's nothing we can't catch on a spinner right now. Yeah. We fought them a lot differently the last couple of years than we did 10 years ago. Times have changed as far as that. The I think that, that, so that the tackle has gotten so much better that nowadays you can target these fish. You're right. We can target these fish on spinning gear. And the theory being is if you can, you want to get that fish within an hour to the boat. Yeah. And we've caught a couple of 300 pound fish on spinning gear, got into the boat in less than an hour. There he is. Well, those fish are down 30 feet off the bottom right now. I just, it was funny you say that. I was dropping it down. It got whacked on the way down. You got a good one on what? I got a good one. Unless I got a two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so can you imagine a little kid? Imagine an eight-year-old kid out no. here. No. 
Can you? It's, it's, that's what I live for. I'm a 54 year old kid and I'm having fun. Absolutely. Yeah. I do this every day and I'm having fun. All right. You got, you got a good one? I got, I got two good ones. No, well, I got, I got one decent one and one. All right, I'll be right with you. you no, I got them. All right, one's off. All right, we're over at school big fish here, guys. Even I got a big one. So I had two fish on here. One of them was final hooked in the back. <laughs> uh, he was barely hooked. I but, had the, my big one popped off. Oh, like really? you said, he was barely hooked too. Nice. I actually popped him off with the, with the gaff, and then he just floated for the one second too long for himself. So Rich, what do you think the water temperature is right now? Chilly. <laughs> Probably 47, 48. And I think it is down below, it's it's always cold down right on the bottom, you know? Yeah. My son would be out here with this with this bass fishing rod. Alright, I threw it off the back. Look at something bigger, maybe like a halibut. <laughs> Just for the halibut. We don't even think about tourism and, and fishing because we live here. But guess what? People drive them out. Yeah, you know what it is? And I, that's a great point. Uh, Rich, is that, you know, we sometimes take for granted, we sometimes take for granted where we live, yeah. you know, and uh, oh, I just dropped him there. We, I mean, you live down the Cape, and down the Cape obviously is a big tourist spot. But Plymouth but is fishing. But Plymouth is huge. People forget about that. There's buses every day coming into Plymouth. And like I say, you guys drove around on the waterfront this morning. We saw Plymouth Rock, we'll see it this afternoon. Some great places to eat. It looks like a snag job here. Yeah, I love a guy. Lift up. Just lift yep. up. Perfect. Doesn't happen often. That shows you how thick these fish are down there. Get another there. teaser. Yeah. Let's switch you up and try, try something different. All right. Oh, that's okay. Uh, la, 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 la. Nice fish. I like nice fish. Good use for a broken rod. I saw that earlier. I like that. Well, it's almost time to take the jacket off. Well, as you can tell guys out here right now, as Rich and I have been having a conversation about the opportunities that exist on Cell Wagon Bang, it is just one fish after another. And over our shoulder, Jason's been nice enough to just be loading the bucket with fish as we've been having a conversation. <laughs> oh, just drop that guy, but I'm not worried because I'm just going to swing back down to the bottom. Now, sometimes, sometimes if the current's going really far, really fast, you don't want your line just to trail up behind the boat because they hit, they hit a vertically dropped jig a lot better. So you gotta cast it. I always tell people, get one hand on the bottom of the rod, the other hand's holding the line. It's in free spool right now, and I always check it, make sure it's not wrapped. So I let it go drop like three or four inches. Swing it like a pendulum. Point the rod at the lure as it flies through the air. The second it hits the water, stop the spool for a second, and then let it go. It makes a difference. The further you cast it, the more fish you catch, is what it comes down to on most days. Now it's just sinking to the bottom. And on. And on. Literally the second it hit the bottom. It's a haddock. Huh? Huh? Nice. You'll tell the haddocks tend to bounce a lot more with, the, with their heads. And she's coming. And cod. A cod. It's what they're feeding on, guys. There are collections of species in the ocean that are just as amazing and special as what you find on land, like at Yellowstone or Yosemite, places that people can go. It's just that here it's under the ocean, and therefore people think that it's just a flat, futureless ocean when that's not really the case. Stellwagen Bank is a marine protected area about the size of Rhode Island that's located at the mouth of Massachusetts Bay, approximately 20 miles outside of Boston and 10 miles offshore of Situate. It's a, it's a specially designated area that Congress realized was worth protecting back in 1992. Uh, the reason why the U.S. Congress designated it was because of its ecological qualities as well as the fact that it's home to many, many historic shipwrecks.
What makes Stahlwagen Bank special really is the interplay of uh, the geology on the seafloor as well as the ocean currents that uh, wash over that geology every day, twice a day with the tides coming in and coming out. And that brings nutrient-rich waters from the deep up over the top of Stellwagen Bank. And that kicks off the, the food web by creating blooms of plankton that everything else depends on and feeds on. And it's one of the most productive uh, areas in the entire Gulf of Maine. Usually it's small forage fish that are feeding on these little plankton like herring, like sand eels or sand lance as we call them, and mackerel. And then a lot of things are feeding on those forage fish like sharks, bluefin tuna, codfish, haddock, all manner of uh, species that people enjoy eating and catching and make this place what it is. And we have over 22 species of whales in Stellwagen Bank Sanctuary. And in addition to them, we have 54 species of seabirds out there. The word sanctuary is a little bit misleading. What it really is, is a multiple use area where uses are allowed for the most part and accommodated as long as they don't undermine or destroy the fundamental ecological basis for the sanctuary. We need to understand as much as we possibly can about the sanctuary and the resources within it. So we wholeheartedly support and encourage recreational fishing in the sanctuary. We share the same goal as recreational fishermen. That is to restore and maintain the natural productivity of Stellwagen Bank National Marine Sanctuary. We can achieve this goal by opening lines of communication and working more closely together. If you look around, Chris, without binoculars, right now, because you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine boats within distance right now. The only nice day for a week. We only got nine boats nine out here. Nine boats. Yeah. So not a lot of pressure on these fish right now. I figure with these gannets to our right, they'll be in the water again. But also the, the, the dolphin were out here too, a second ago. This is a really nice cod. Unfortunately, this guy's going back because these are protected. That's a beautiful fish right there. Ah, yeah, I don't like lipping them. That's better grab them either. Yeah, they, I got them underneath. Yeah, that's good. You got a little bit of teeth. They're not like that's crazy, but yeah, they'll rough you up though. They will, they'll cut you. Got him. I got you. I'm gonna go ahead and release this guy back in. Because we're at 85, 90 feet of water, and this guy came up real easy, he's gonna swim back, no problem. I'm gonna go ahead and release him. He's gone. I'm, we're having 100% release really success. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, these I haven't seen anything float. Everything seems to be going back all healthy. just. There's nothing predating them on the way down. Um, and then we're not snagging them because we only have single hooks. Makes a big difference. So, guys, this is Stell Wagon Bank in the early spring. Nice fish right there, huh? Unbelievable. You see these marks right here? Yep, they all have them. They're, every one of them does. Yep. You see the one right behind them? There's two of them there. That's genetic. Yeah. Um, but sometimes you will get them with. Oh. I had one, there was one earlier I threw in that had like a lamp or it was like a circle just behind that down lower. Yep. <laughs> On our way back to port, Rich filleted our catch and we were treated to some beautiful views of the Plymouth waterfront while soaking in the late day sun. I couldn't wait to get some of the fresh haddock back to Annie Nebreski, our design manager and resident chef, to see what kind of magic he could work in the kitchen. All right, welcome back to the show. Chris brought us some beautiful fresh haddock here. Uh, haddock is one of my all-time favorite fish to eat. We're going to start things off today with a classic New England haddock chowder. So now we're left over with this beautiful fish rack, but this is ideal for making a really good fish stock. Haddock in particular makes a very good stock. Uh, the only thing we do need to do is I'm going to remove the gills. It said that if you don't do that, it can kind of create a bitter taste. We'll do a sprig of fresh dill. Just do a little bit of celery in there. 
and a small piece of onion. I'm going to add just about enough water just to cover the fish. I'll bring that to a furious boil, and once it's boiling, we'll lower the heat and simmer it for about a half an hour or so. All right, next step is we're going to dice up some bacon. Uh, one thing that makes this a lot easier is if you put your bacon in the freezer for about 20 minutes or so, it makes it easier to chop up. So kind of the ideal ratio for a chowder like this is you kind of want equal amounts of fish, onion, and potatoes. Uh, it might seem like a lot of onion, but these are going to cook down quite a bit. And as we're going, we'll get started chopping the potatoes. You certainly could use just about any kind of potato, but I like the touch of having a little bit of color in there. I'm going to chop these up into small cubes. And I also like to dice some of it up really finely, and that'll help thicken the chowder at the end. I'm going to add just a little bit of thyme. All right, our onions are coming along nicely. Uh, this is another one of my secret ingredients, uh, Accent. You can buy it at the supermarket. It's actually MSG, and just a little bit of this stuff will go a long way, so maybe a quarter of a teaspoon tops. Just a little crunch of black pepper. And once the onions are cooked, it's time to add the potatoes in. And now we're gonna top this off with some of our lovely fish stock. Um, that's been simmering for about a half an hour. That's all you really need to do for a fish stock. And we just want to get the potatoes so they're just barely all the way covered with stock. All right, so we're now we're going to raise the heat on that, bring that up to a slow boil. All right, while our potatoes are boiling there, we're going to get the fish ready. Uh, we've got two beautiful haddock fillets here. I'm just going to give these a good dose of sea salt and a little black pepper, not much. Potatoes are finishing up here in the pot. We're going to get started on a simple roux. A roux is basically just melted butter and flour equal proportions of each. Um, so I'm gonna go with about three tablespoons of butter, three tablespoons of flour. What's up, dude? We'll just add our flour to our melted butter. Burner on low heat. I'm gonna stir that together until it's nice and smooth. Turn that off and set it to the back and we'll use that later to thicken the chowder. All right, we've been boiling our taters for about 12 minutes now, and that's just about where I want them. So at this point, I'm gonna add the fillets on top. I'm gonna turn the heat to low. Now we're gonna add in probably about two cups of whole milk, just until everything is sort of covered up. We just don't want this chowder to break, so as long as it stays below 212 degrees, we're all set, but if it gets above that, things can get ugly. Good, I'm just gonna give it a quick dash of salt. You always wanna salt your chowder right at the very end. All right, so we've been uh, kind of slow simmering our chowder for about 25 minutes now. All the flavors are getting happy and coming together and mingling in there, and I think we're uh, just about done. It's thickened up quite a bit. So we've got some nice big chunks of fish in there. The haddock held together fairly well. Did you forget about the bacon bits? I did not. We are gonna kind of serve these at the end, sprinkle those on there. Yeah, the unbelievable, huh? Yeah, it's one of my favorites. I'll take a good fish chatter over a good clam chatter any day of the week. That's unbelievable.